This is the future of 3D modeling. Hello, my friends, and how are you doing? You wanted me to show you more local stuff, so here we are. Today, I want to show you Part Crafter, which not only creates a 3D model from a 2D image, but also separates it into different parts up to 16. So I want to show you two simple ways and one difficult way to set all this up and run it for yourself. Please also leave a like if you want to support me making more videos about local content so that the algorithm pushes this forward. Let's get started. So first I want to give a big, big shout out to Wizardly Bump 17 and Mesa Chacha who helped me today a lot, spent hours on helping me to set this up locally and then also to Tetsu and Marduk191, all from my Discord. They're really helpful and amazing. First, let's have a look at the project page of Part Crafter. So you can see here structured 3D mesh generation via compositional latent diffusion transformers. And down here, you can already see some images on how this is supposed to look. As you can see here, you have an image and then this is separated into different parts as a 3D model so you can afterwards use that directly in 3D software. To show you that this actually works here, I have the model that I have created and I have imported into Blender. And as you can see, I can click here on different parts of that robot and I can select them, I can manipulate them. I'm not a Blender guy, so I can't really do most of that, but it's there. As you can see, we do have a model. It's fairly detailed and it's separated into its different parts. And that's the most important part here. So now let's talk about how to get this to run. And for that, here's another shout out to the channel Social and Apps, where this user has created or provided a way to run it on Hugging Face and a way to run it on a Google Colab. I will provide both of these links below the video. The first thing here is the hugging face link where you have to do absolutely nothing. It is just on there. You can run it if you want to. You have some free credits on hugging face. And if you want to run it more, you need to buy some credits to do that. So I managed to run one model here with 16 parts, which is the maximum amount. As you can see, I can rotate that. It works pretty well. The second thing you can do is to run this on a Google pull up. And here, what you want to do is to click here on copy to drive. So this is copied over to your own Google Drive. As soon as you've done this, you want to go here to runtime. You want to go to change runtime type and you want to click here on T4 GPU and click on save. Afterwards, up here, there's a connect button. You can click on that, but probably you're also good by just clicking on the play button. So on the top here, you have a play button here. You want to click that. You want to wait until this runs through the whole install. This can take some time. I also got an error where it said it has to restart. So click on restart and then click the play button again. And you know it is finished when you scroll all the way down on this scroll bar and then also on this scroll bar and you see here a local URL and the public URL. Click on the public URL and then this will open up the Gradio and here you have it and you can run it in here. The result I got this time from that test run wasn't nearly as good, but it's basically the same thing. So you can run it multiple times to get the result you want to have. And then finally, you can also run this locally. Now, this was a pain to install, but I want to give you some advice on how to get this running. Uh, but also, as you can see, it's the same interface to have here this kind of rotation preview. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. So that's already pretty good. And when you scroll down, you have all of these settings here with the number of parts, with the seats, the tokens and so on and so on. You click on generate. You also and this is very important here, want to click the hook for remove background because the results are going to be better without a background. Now, also, if you generate the 2D image, aim for a neutral background so it is easier to remove. Also here in my prompt, I asked for the parts to have different colors. This might make it a little bit easier for the software to figure out what parts to separate. 
So let's talk about how to install this locally on Windows. You can also install this on Linux and there it should be way easier to do the same thing. But the user check Danish, I guess, has created a part crafter Windows version. Now this is an early version and that's why it is so complex to install all of that. So you have some information here on how to install when you scroll down, but for me that didn't work out. And then you have to basically play whack-a-mole with all the different error messages you get. And if you don't know what you do, you probably want to join either my Discord or another Discord to ask the users how to figure that out, how to iron all of these problems out. So the first situation that we have here is it starts right away by creating the Venth, but it doesn't tell you anything about actually installing and downloading the project, which actually is a two parter. So what you want to do first is to go on Windows to your user folder. By user folder, I mean that you have a folder that says user and then inside of the folder you have the user names. So open up that username folder and that's basically the root folder of your user account. So in that you want to open up the command line CMD. And then in the command line, you want to write git clone and then this root address here. I will have a Word document down below that has these commands in there. So hopefully this helps you a little bit along the way. Now, as soon as this has been git cloned, which shouldn't take very long, you want to go to the root folder, which is this paper crafter minus windows this is the root folder of that project while you're in there you want to go into the cmd or in the cmd you want to change over to that root folder when you have done that you want to go in there and say git check windows main because the crazy thing here is if we go to the root folder of that project papercraft the minus window you have these files down here but these are not all the files you need so here we have another folder if you look at the web domain up here it says tree windows main and in the tree windows main, we, for example, also have requirement.txt and we need that later on. It's a pretty important part of that. So this is why you need to have this check out windows main. So it's also downloading these files. After you've done that, you want to type in the CMD Python minus M vent vent. This is going to create the vent folder. That's pretty important. And then you have to write this dot vent scripts activate to activate the vent. And then you can execute all of the other commands you have to do by other commands. I mean what you can find here. Now this says from Wenth, so you might have to go to the Wenth folder, but you might also be able to do it from the root folder. The first thing here kind of worked well. The requirements also worked well. The deep seat didn't work at all. And there are some problems here because the deep seat version is not available for Windows in that version, uh, but the version it is available for needs another of this like torch version here. So instead, what you need for the torch version is this here pip install torch and then 222 and cu 1.1 that kind of version here with all of that other stuff there and then this kind of specific deep speed version that will work with that specific version of torch and cuda and so on so if you're pretty confused right now about how all of that works, I'm too. And I took like at least two hours to figure all of that out. Ask him at Discord for help if you can't get it to run. Uh, but if it does, it works pretty well and it's pretty fun to use it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye.